Assassin's Creed Unity is the shinier of the two Assassin's Creed games that are being released this November. Anyone who's listened to Josh the Top Out Gamer and myself on the Shout Pit podcast that we do every week will know that we both had some skepticisms about the game due to a short month delay and all public displays of the gameplay being played on PCs rocking GTX Titan cards. Unfortunately, it seems some of our fears are somewhat a reality. This time around, you play as Arno Dorian, a typical roguish young man whose father is killed when Arno was a creepy kid and is adopted by this guy, who is the father of this creepy kid, but it's okay because they both grow into sexy adults who have one of those from two different worlds romances. It's a pretty typical love story. Anywho, daddy number two goes down. Arno gets the blame and his ass is locked up in the famous Bastille. You know, the one Bastille Day is named after? The one that celebrates mimes? Anywho, in the Bastille, Arno meets an assassin who reveals to Arno that his first daddy was an assassin as well, and also reveals that Arno might have the stuff to become one of the Brotherhood. From here, there's a little montage, you break out, and then the journey of Arno Dorian begins. And it's kind of boring. The single player campaign is your typical AC affair. Two secret societies are pulling the strings that lead to what are now major historic events, this time being the French Revolution, that has a handful of historical figures sprinkled out throughout the storyline that leads to a rather bland conclusion that is typical of Ubisoft these days. If you look at Watch Dogs, Far Cry 3, and even prior PC games, you can see that this is kind of not surprising at all. Single player missions themselves are varied enough, with a minimal amount of tail this guy missions and more stab this guy in the neck missions. A nice change to the main assassination missions is that the missions themselves give you a set of sub-objectives that will give you an advantage against the attended target. An example of this is early in the game when you take out a contact for one of the big bads, only to take his place in a confessional inside the church, giving you a unique chance to deliver a killing blow. The mission's a nice way of mixing up the norm, but other games such as Hitman have done the open assassination contracts a lot better. If you get sick of the single player, there are almost too many things to do. It's almost like Ubisoft thinks you have no real job and you have all the time in the world. I mean, look at all this stuff. Random assassin contracts, riddles, collectibles, and oh my, look at all those damn chests. When I looked at the map screen for the first time, I was almost overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that was on the screen. That said, the variety of the contracts is actually quite refreshing and the general difficulty of the riddles is a good time waster if you have the time to waste. If you're feeling a bit lonely chasing after Bulbles and Nexus Dab, Unity's most publicized feature is probably what you need. Unity lets you take a highly customizable Arno into rather linear two to four player co-op missions. Decking out your Arno in a variety of stat boosting apparel, specific skills such as lockpicking and varying non-lethal bombs, as well as a vast collection of weapon types and weapons, is almost everything you could want. Unless you're like me, and you want daggers. There are no daggers. Sorry pal. I actually found the co-op missions rather fun, which is surprising because it was one of my first complaints when the feature was revealed in E3. The missions themselves are quite short, but have enough variety in them to make them a nice addition. Personally, I never really played the cat and mouse style of multiplayer of past AC games, so I'm not missing the shift focus to co-op. Seeing a team of assassins take on a challenge is rather a sight to see when it goes right. Unfortunately, the technical side of Unity's co-op can be at times a complete mess. Be it the meh to awful lag to the amazingly broken matchmaking, where at times you can wait up to five minutes to get into a game. I've had instances of NPCs refusing to follow AI pause, leaving me and another player taking pot shots at the NPC to see if we could fail our way out of the game. In other instances, three other players and myself were stuck in a weird fail state that had all four of us falling through the world, and unfortunately, the technical difficulties are not just in the co-op. The quality of the whole game is somewhat poor, with the game having trouble keeping in the 30 frames per second target that Ubisoft has claimed the game would be in. I have to say that most of the time I spent with the game, I would be lucky if the frame rate bounced between 15 and 25 frames per second, making the game jarring. I felt at times that the character's response was affected by the awful frame rate during the newer, but not better combat, felt like I had some low latency on my control input that made me feel like I was throwing around a bag of potatoes as opposed to swashbuckling. During crowd scenes, this frame rate drop is definitely apparent. Frame rate issues aside, the game is just full of bugs and glitches, especially for a game that is a AAA title such as this. Collision detection feels almost non-existent with hits missing home and enemies reacting in a way that would make a pro wrestler blush. People in the crowd pop out and in out of nowhere, and in some instances change model completely. NPCs can be anywhere from caught in walls to flying in midair. And of course we have the all too common fall through the earth glitch. This has happened to me no less than 10 times and this is a first for me. And I've been playing games my whole life. Another problem with this game is the crazy long load times, We're looking at about a minimum of 34 seconds for most things. Part of me just wishes this game was pushed back 6 months so they could at least get most of the kinks out of the system, and that's not even the worst of it. This game has a lot of other issues as well. You know all those chests I mentioned earlier? Well you see, the thing is some of them can only be opened after fulfilling some requirements, one of which is by developing your lockpicking skill, which is fair enough, it's part of the game. The problem is when it comes down to the two other types of chests that are available. One type can only be opened with a separate companion app for Unity, that is a poor replacement for the Brotherhood missions from previous games. The second set of chests utilizes the Initiate sub which most of which is locked away for the time being. Add on top of that microtransactions to save time, quotation marks, and you have a trinity of awful. It's like injecting hot dog meat into anything. 
It's just awful. That said, there are some positives to take away from AC Unity, one of which is the game does look quite good. With buildings painstakingly rendered to close to one-to-one -one scale, you finally get a feeling of how big some of these truly magnificent marvels of architecture and engineering actually are. Hell, it looks so good I think I can cross Paris off my bucket list. Even the clothing of the characters looks quite good. You can actually see little details like velvet and some of the braiding and everything on the costuming. It actually looks like proper costuming as opposed to modeling. It's insane, really, the amount of detail that has gone into this game. And you gotta say bravo to the Ubisoft artists. They generally are good at what they do. But at the end of the day, a pretty game is not enough to justify a purchase. The new combat system feels like a step backwards and you're no longer a well a death like you used to be. And forcing a player to spend time away from the game to unlock everything is not really on. Mix that with a bland story and a lead that's pretty vanilla and it's enough to be already wary of. But include the fact the game is just not finished. No game should be this buggy. As a consumer and a fan of the Assassin's Creed series, I have to say to avoid this at all costs. At least until Ubisoft fixes a majority of the problems. If they ever will. So I'm giving it about a 5 out of 10. C'est la vie, I guess.